Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I have a review for you of these guys right here. Both of these represent the Civivi Anthropos. First off, I want to thank my buddy Gray Sentinel for loaning me the orange guy. He had it sent to me directly from the factory, well, from the, the, the dealer, I suppose. Um, And that was great of him, and I very much appreciate that. And I want to thank my buddy Ashton for donating the black one without letting me know ahead of time. It was a surprise, and it was a pleasant one. And actually, it was very nice to see the two of these, even if ending up with the two of them on the table was a happy accident. So, um, there you go. Thank Thank you very much to you both. Uh, let's go ahead and do a size comparison, and I'll only use the one for this guy. Um, we'll go ahead and start off with, of course, here's Spidecodelica. Um, and so you can see here, size-wise, not a huge knife, but a little bit bigger than the blade. Um, here it is against the uh, Dario Rat number two. And your Ontario rat number one. So uh, there you go. Those are those guys right there. And then um, let's see here. I think that'll do for the uh, size comparison. Do a quick blade measurement right quick. Uh, we're coming in a little bit under three and a half inches. Uh, maybe 3.3 is something along those lines. Um, so either way, um, we're coming in under three and a half there. That's good. Next thing, um, this guy is... Take the rat too off the camera here. Don't need that. Um, this guy right here is a uh, knife that has been designed by Elijah. Aisham. Um, and this is actually a new maker's mark for him, which I'm pretty, you know, amused by. But um, Elijah Aisham is a uh, very popular knife maker right now, uh, knife designer right now. That is, he has uh, done, done a lot of really cool stuff. He's done the Wii knives. He's done a lot of work with Wii knives. He's done the Zeta. He's done the, 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 the Arrakis. He's done the Eschaton. He's done a bunch of crazy stuff, as well as working with Kaiser on the, um, the, the, the Megatherium, Minotherium, all of those folks. Uh, he's got done a bunch of work in here, but this is actually his first collaboration with Civivi. And Civivi is Wee Knives budget line. Um, it is sort of their, their attempt to make knives that are targeting lower price points, but still uh, maintaining high quality. So uh, it's actually really cool to see Elijah working with them, and that, that's pretty awesome. So, um, that's what's going on here, and let's go ahead and jump into the good, the great, the bad, the ugly of this very interesting little knife right here. So, um, to f start with, like I said, this guy is Elijah Isham, and he's got a new maker's mark here, and I gotta say, I kinda love it. Um, if you've ever met Elijah Isham, or frankly seen pictures or video of him, it is 100% accurate. It is a very good way of capturing his personal style and sensibility. It it's just, it's, it's a, it's a very nice little detail here. He's got a very Dolly-esque thing that, about him that I, I, I appreciate, and so, uh, so you get captured there with a little bit of whimsy. Nice. No argument whatsoever. Next thing, um, the ergonomics on this guy are very nice. Um, you've got two good options for carrying this. Or, uh, for holding this, that is. You can be back here. And in this case, actually, the pocket clip is well designed. It serves to fill the hand well. Or you can pretty straightforwardly choke up a little bit. And in this case, you're not going to slide onto the blade because this little area down here is preventing your hand from sliding further. And you've got a nice uh, ability to choke up. I, You know, I've been using this guy when I've been cutting with it. And it, it works pretty damn well. So the ergos are good. Next thing, the action on this guy is reliable. Um, I have not missed a flip once with either of these two knives. They are very, very good. Um, in terms of action, this one has a very strong detent. It re deploys 100% reliably. This one is a little bit weaker, but still, um, that's, that's a nice thing. Next thing, clip on these guys is a bit vanilla, but you know what? It works well. Um, they've gone ahead, they put the screws up underneath it, but on the whole, it, it'll, it's tall enough that that doesn't matter. It, it slides into the pocket nicely. It gives you a relatively deep carry, coming up to about here, which, no objection there. I mean, it's overall quite a nice little uh, uh, clip design there. Next thing, the size on this is pretty good. In the pocket, it's not particularly large. I mean, here we can compare it size-wise with the Spyderco Delica in the pocket. You can see here it's about the same size, even though the blade length is is uh, considerably larger, um, which is good. And then finally, this is a very much kind of an Isham design. Um, I like the fact that they've gone a little bit above and beyond. They're doing a little tiny bit of milling here on the handle here to expose the colored versions, although I kind of like the black. Personally, the, the, the colored versions give you a little bit of extra pop to it, so I can't argue with that, but this is very much an Isham design. You you feel his, his DNA, so to speak, in this guy. Um, it very much smells like an Isham knife, so there you go. Um, to me, at least, that's what's good, is that it is a very Isham design. It's got a nice size, good clip, reliable action, nice ergos, and the maker's mark is very nice. Um, on the great side for me, absolutely 100% is the blade. It is very hard to sometimes express uh, what makes a, a good blade cut well, or what makes a blade cut. Um, this guy, one of the things that is key to it is not only having your stock thickness be a reasonable size, which can prevent binding in thicker or harder materials, but the, thick, uh, the thinness of behind the edge, the thinness of the grind. And this knife comes down to an incredibly thin edge. I mean, the, the, I'll see if I can show you. Yeah. 
That's right. This guy uh, is an amazing, amazing, amazing grind. This thins out so freaking well. It is beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I like so much this blade. It is just really, really good. For I went to town on some cardboard with this guy, just like... And it was like, you know, throwing a hot freaking knife through butter. It was beautiful. So this guy cuts amazingly well. And on top of that, it's in D2 steel. Now, D2 steel is not something you generally write home about, but you know what? Especially, you know, it is a, a well-known steel, and it is a reasonable steel for everyday carry. Not the most rust-resistant thing, ever, but you know what? It works. And so overall, the blade on this guy is really, really good. I like the blade on this knife a lot. Every time I use this knife as a knife, I really appreciated the cutting that task. And so this blade is good. I wish every budget, and frankly, I wish every knife cut this well. That would be a beautiful thing. So to me, at least that's what's great is this blade is just really, really good on the bad side. Um, one thing that a lot of folks have asked me is, well, Nick, can you flick this guy? Can you do a finger flick with this? Um, on this guy, you cannot because the detent is too hard. On this guy, I barely managed... There we go. Um, this, the detent on this one is, is lighter enough that you can get that out there, kind of. But it's not necessarily a flicky knife. This is not big enough, and I have relatively smaller fingers, so it's probably not going to work out so well. Um, next thing, the carbon fiber on this guy is there, but it's honestly not so amazing. I mean, it's fine, but it feels at some level like a carbon fiber sticker that has been applied on top of some G10, and in fact, you can see in this version, with the color G10, exactly the extent of that. Maybe it is real carbon fiber, maybe it isn't. I, you know, I don't really care, but it's not the most impressive CF, frankly frankly, ever. Um, there, there were a lot more impressive CF, uh, you know, pieces out there that just feel a lot more dynamic, feel like there's more play with the light. Whatever, not a big deal. Um, next thing, the flipper tab on this guy. So I like the Isham flipper tab a lot. Um, Elijah Isham is generally very good at designing flippers um, because he tends to do these relatively low profile, just hanging off the back sorts of things. And this is absolutely not pocket pecking. This is completely and totally subtle in the pocket. What you do instead is you kind of use your finger here and you grab it. And as you grab it, you're pulling your you're pulling the tab backwards, and it it works 100 percent of the time. It's not good if you like light switch style or button push style, but it absolutely works for light switch flipping. It is functional. Unfortunately, it really does require a lighted detent, and the very hard detent on this orange one makes it a little less than ideal. It's a little painful each time I use it. And so, this is actually the first time I've not cared for the Elijah Isham flipper tab. With this particular hot detent, it just doesn't work so well, and I'm not a big fan of that. The black one, though, I'll say, the light of the tent makes that kind of a non-issue, so it's really seeming like it might be luck of the draw. Um, not a big deal. Um, the, the next thing, though, I, I am a little bit concerned with the amount of variance between these two. I like this black knife, actually, substantially more than I like this orange knife, and a big part of that is the detent on this guy, and I feel like it may actually just be the lock bar tension is a Lot harder. This guy has an action that is a lot less impressive in terms of the false shut attitudeness. Um, false shut attitudeness. Sure, that works. Um, you pull this guy back. A, again, it's a little bit more painful each time. Whereas on this guy, it, it does definitely fall shut more readily. And I, so I suspect I could probably bend the lock bar back on this guy and mess with it a little bit, do a little bit better. But that's not something I'm super in love with. I mean, eh, well, as you're getting into these prices, you should be expecting, you know, a relative consistency here. And considering that this makes a very different experience, had I just gotten the black one, I'd probably feel a lot better about the knife than I do having gotten that one as well. So um, to me, at least, that's what's bad here, is that there seems to be some inconsistency in the tent or overall lock bar tension or some element of it that makes these knives, these two knives, which are the same model, feel very, very different. The uh, flipper tab can be a little bit painful on this guy. Um, the uh, carbon fiber is there, but it's not super impressive, and it's not really flickable if that's something you're after. On the uh, ugly front, there are two ugly things here. I mean, to start with, honestly... This doesn't feel as well made as the other knives I've handled from Civivi. Um, and there were a couple of things that make me say that. This has sort of, the, the other Civivis have that nice touch of the very nicely polished line. Is This is lacking that. This guy has this internal stop pin. Well, it's external, but internal stop pin thing. Just, it feels on the whole actually a lot cheaper. It feels a lot less well made. The action on this guy is a lot less impressive than the other ones. Um, it feels like it was maybe, honestly, it, I wouldn't be shocked if I found out that the these were made at a different factory from the Stratera, the Praxis, the Backlash, all of those guys. Maybe it's just cost cutting. Maybe they said, well, I don't know, we got to pay Elijah, we got to do D2 steel, so we're going to cut some corners elsewhere. But honestly, 
it does feel a little bit like a step down. This is the least impressive Civivi in terms of build quality I've handled before. It's still a very nice knife, I gotta say that. I'm not saying it's a bad knife, I'm just saying that Civivi has impressed me a lot more in the past. And so I, I was thinking, you know, okay, a big chunk of money must have gone to the designer or gone to the steel or to this grind or something like that. And that was what I was thinking, that this knife was probably like in the, because I do my best very often not to learn the price until I'm almost finished writing the review, because very often that'll, you know, change my perspective and I form a, a model of what this should cost. And so I was thinking this was going to be like a $50 knife, something like that, maybe 60 bucks, you know, you pay the designer a little bit. Unfortunately, though, this is 80 bucks. And now look, again, bias. The three years ago, this would have been a showstopper at 80 bucks. This would have been just like a, wow, 80 bucks, and still this blade is impressive. I'll give them that every day of the week. But honestly, it bugs me a little bit that this is twice the price of the Civivi, like Praxis or Backlash, but feels not quite as nice. Um, it, it, It's just awkward to me that th th this feels like a step down for Civivi, even as they're stepping up in price. I figured this would be a more, uh, I'm sorry, a less expensive knife in their lineup, and it turns out to be one of the most expensive ones, or at least certainly the most expensive one I handled. And so relative to things like the Statera, the, 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 the Praxis, etc., this just doesn't really impress me, and yet the price is much higher. So to me, both of those things are a little bit ugly, is that the price is a little bit higher than I expected, and at the same time, it feels like a step down in some areas of build quality relative to some of your other civivis out there. So that's the ugly to me. Um, final conclusions, I think this is a very nice knife. And again, two or three years ago, this would have been like, oh my god, impressive. I mean, two or three years ago for 80 bucks you, you, the, 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 there wasn't all that many choices and this was a, a higher end version or this would have been a higher end choice um and you know because it has a very nice action it's got a nice steel it's got a very much an interesting design it's an isham knife through and through you take one look at it, it's like hey elijah all over this well, actually, he is kind of all over. But still, nevertheless, and it has this amazing blade. And I really, that is the redeemer for me. That is what makes this knife still something that I can think of, probably, you know, possibly recommending to somebody. They say, I want something relatively inexpensive that really, really cuts. Okay, your car alarm annoying the crap out of me out there, person. But anyways, um... This is a really, really impressive and amazing blade on this guy. A really great knife. Unfortunately, though, it has also got a much less compelling flipper tab than, than usual, frankly. I, I don't like this Isham flipper tab here, and specifically on this guy with the hard detent. That's, that's not great. The action on them is okay. This one is definitely better than okay. This one, I would even go so far as to say, is a pretty good action. Um, it is, at least certainly for the price, it's, it's not bad at all. But on this one, it feels like it's just okay. And the knife overall feels like a little bit of a step down in quality, which I'm not loving. Well, at the same time, it's a step up in price, and that's not doing it for me either. I really, really do love the blade. I, I keep coming back to this. Like, this right here is absolutely amazing. The whole package... Maybe a little bit less so. Um, and I, I really do wish that all of the blades out there were like that. If every knife company were grinding their blades to this sort of a thin edge, oh man, would the world cut better. This is, everybody else should be taking note of how this is done. And that's what makes me feel like, okay, you know what? Sure, it's a little high in the price. Sure, it's a little bit of a step down, but it's hosting that. Um, but my biggest feeling, honestly, for this guy was a little bit of confusion. It feels like at some level, Civivi is having trouble competing with themselves. <laughs> like, it, it, there is some major difference in the price here that's making these guys feel a little bit weird relative to the rest of their lineup. The, the, the Civivi line is really amazing because of the value they've delivered. The fact that they're making knives that feel way, way, way nicer than their price would otherwise suggest, and this one feels a little bit less like that. And so if they keep doing this, if they if this becomes a habit of dialing back the quality a little bit while dialing up the price, that's not going to fly. It's not like Civivi is like a super brand name that, you know, will carry them through. So I really, really do hope that this is sort of a dalliance uh, that, 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 they, that they return back to their value roots later on. But at the same time, the blade. The blade is where I keep coming down. So here's my final conclusion. It's a little frustrating. <laughs> it's a little bit weird. But if you really want to cut well and you're willing to put up with the rest of it, this is definitely something that, uh, well, you might consider doing a little bit of anthropology, if you will. So anyways, there you go. Um, a very, very nice blade. Interesting. I like the design very much, but uh, I hope that they're able to pull that value back to, to where it's uh, historically been for the brand. So anyways, there you go. Hope this has been interesting to you. Have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.